In this question, we have a Bohr diagram for a neutral silicon atom shown over here. And we are asked how many protons are in a neutral silicon atom. So we can go and have a look in our periodic table and we'll find silicon. There's silicon. And we're looking for the number of protons, which is the same as the atomic number, which is that number in the top left. So silicon has 14 protons. So we've got 14 protons in a silicon atom. And if we look at our diagram and count how many electrons that are shown, we've got two in the first energy level. We've got eight in the second energy level. That's 10 in total and four in the outer energy level, the valence energy level. So that's a total of 14 electrons, which sounds correct because that matches our number of protons. And since it's a neutral atom, the positively charged protons must match the positively charged electrons. Next, it's asking us how many core electrons are there in a neutral silicon atom? So the core electrons are any electrons that are not in the valence shell or the outer energy level. So to look for the core, we're going to ignore the outer energy level. So any electrons in that outer level, we're going to ignore. And we're going to count all the electrons on the inside. So that means we've got two in our first energy level, eight in our second energy level. That adds up to 10. So how many core electrons do we have? We have 10 core electrons. OK. Now what we're trying to calculate is our effective nuclear charge. So effective nuclear charge is the idea that we have a certain number of protons in our nucleus that are positively charged. And we have electrons in the outer shell. I'll just get rid of these here. We've got electrons in our outer shell that feel attraction to our nucleus because of Coulomb's law. However, if we think about this electron here, and its attraction to the nucleus. It actually has all these electrons which are inside the core part of the atom that are actually repelling our electron. So even though our outer electron in that valence shell is experiencing an attraction from the positively charged nucleus, it also experiences a repulsion from all these electrons that are in the shells closer to the nucleus than the shell that it's in. So as a result, the effective charge that it experiences isn't equal to the full nuclear charge. So to calculate that, we have an equation for effective charge, which is that the effective nuclear charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of core electrons. So the effective nuclear charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons in the core. So in this case, our effective charge is going to be equal to the number of protons, which we found was 14, minus the core electrons, which we found was 10. That gets us a effective nuclear charge of four. Okay. Wonderful. So our next question, final question here, is what group is silicon in? So let's go and have a look at our periodic table again. Remember, the group is the column. So the column that's silicon in is 14, group 14. So silicon is in group 14. And the reason that it's asking us this question is so that we can start to see this shortcut for figuring out the effective nuclear charge, which is just to look at the group. So group 14 has an effective nuclear charge of four. So the effective nuclear charge is going to be one for things in group one, two for the things in group two, three for things in group 13, four for things in group 14, and so on. So that's a shortcut for figuring out our effective nuclear charge without having to go through the process of counting the core electrons and the protons and doing that calculation every time.